Hello, very good evening to you. Welcome to Friday Night's Calendar and we have a packed programme for you this evening. Yes, these are the main stories in the programme tonight. Also tonight... The moment shots are fired in a daylight shooting in Leeds. We've the latest on the investigation. We're live in Sheffield, where the Tramlines Festival has begun. We'll be joining our reporter Katie Oscroft shortly. We're in Paris, where the Olympic Games are about to begin. Plus, we've a calendar exclusive. Good evening, Leeds. certainly have Hollywood A-lister Russell Crowe on why Leeds is the latest stop on his worldwide music tour. We played in the Colosseum, we played in the ancient amphitheatre in Pompeii. And now the Brudenell Social Club. Brudenell Social Club in Leeds for <laughs> 400 standing. It's going to be just brilliant. Tonight, well wishers touched by the death of the rugby league legend Rob Burrow have given a huge boost to a fundraising campaign to build a new state of the art motor neurone disease centre in his name in Leeds. The charity behind the purpose built care centre say more than a quarter of a million pounds has been donated in the weeks since his death, and it's now just £500,000 short of its appeal target. The programme is dedicated to the memory of Rob Burrow, who died from the condition last month. He raised millions of pounds and awareness to fight MND. For those like Ian, who lives near York with his wife Rachel, it's a tough but important watch. They do it really well. They do do it really well. Um, and I think it's not the same for everybody. So um, Ian's um, journey isn't the same as as Rob's was, isn't the same as um, anybody else's. Everybody is unique. So it's a really difficult thing for the actors to try and portray that and get that across. You can feel it, you can feel the, the frustration that the characters portray. What we've just seen is, is just so real. This evening's screening comes on the day that plans for the new Rob Burrow Centre for Motor Neurone Disease took a major step forward. A quarter of a million pounds raised since his death, another half a million to go to reach the £6.8 million target to ensure the centre can be built and open next spring. The Leeds Hospital Charity has done a phenomenal fundraising uh, job with the public and, you know, uh, and that's all thanks to everybody out there. And I won't be able to say thanks to all the unknown people who have raised funds for us, but we are nearly there. I think only 500,000 left to raise. I can't wait that uh, this time next year the doors should be open for the Rob Burrow Centre. It feels special that we're able to keep banging Rob's drum and uh, bringing MND into the sort of forefront of people's consciousness. Yes, a powerful episode of Coronation Street tonight. And if you want to watch it, it's here on ITV1 and ITVX at 8 o'clock after Emmerdale. Next tonight, dramatic CCTV footage of a suspected daylight shooting on a busy street in Leeds appears to show the moment shots were fired before a car lost control and hit another vehicle. Shouting and several bangs can be heard in the footage, which was captured just off Burley Road yesterday evening. And from where Michael Billington joins us live now. Michael, it seems there's still a very active investigation still going on there. Yes, it's just over 24 hours since those shots were fired and Burley Road here in Leeds is still closed this evening. Police tape cordons off an area outside a takeaway where a car was abandoned. Now, it was about 10 past five yesterday afternoon when what was thought to be a uh, white Seat came around the corner, weaving its way along Westfield Crescent just off the main road here while a man's heard shouting. Then take a look at this next footage. This is from less than a minute later when what looks to be the same car returns and that is when several gunshots ring out. Well, a man on the pavement ducks for cover while the Seat carries on up the road before hitting a parked car. Now, it's not thought anybody was injured, but West Yorkshire Police have told us that two people have been arrested. They are still being held this evening. Michael Billington live on Burley Road in Leeds. Thank you for that update. 
A murder investigation is underway in South Yorkshire after the body of an 82-year-old man was pulled from a waterway in Mexborough. He was found yesterday morning. Two men have been arrested on suspicion of his murder. A one-kilometre police cordon that had been in place since yesterday was taken down this afternoon. Now stay with us on Friday night's calendar because still to come before 6.30. I'm Russell Crowe's biggest fan. I've been a um, Russell Crowe fan for 30 years. Some from the other side of the world to see a Hollywood star turned musician. Were they not entertained? We find out. Plus... We're in Paris as the Olympic Games get underway in the French capital. And not fantastic weather tonight for the opening ceremony in Paris, but really hotting up after that. Maybe too hot for some of those athletes. But if anyone drops out, Riley Blue is on standby. All the details coming up. Yes, Emma Jess, dressed for the occasion, will join her shortly. Now then, a week on from the night which saw streets descend into chaos in Hare Hills, community leaders there say people are moving forward together. Yes, riots broke out on Thursday night, if you remember, after police and social services responded to a child protection issue. In the seven days since, local councillors have been cleaning up and reassuring neighbours. Now they're planning events like Unity Days to build bridges between communities, as Vicky Smith reports. A week ago, smoke filled the skyline. A double-decker bus set alight. A police car turned over. Now, life here goes on. All that's left is the charred reminders after community leaders have spent days rebuilding. The community has been a little bit anxious. They have been a little bit worried about re repeats of the events of Thursday. But um, we've been in the community, walking with the community, knocking on doors, talking to them, giving them that reassurance that things are settling. Videos from that night showed Councillor Ali appealing for calm. This is our neighbourhood. He says while some wanted trouble, many wanted to help. These are the guys who went and collected water in bins, industrial wheelie bins full of water from neighbours, knocking on doors, asking for water, asking for buckets. These are the real unsung heroes of the day. I burned my head, next brother burned his leg, and it was totally out of order what happened here. There was very good individuals around us right now that did not care about their safety, well-being or anything, and stepped in front yeah, just to help their family. Yeah. Unrest here was seemingly sparked by social services' involvement with a family. The following days saw a huge clean-up and extra police patrols. So far, three men have been charged in relation to the disturbance and 20 people arrested. As officers continue investigating, the focus for people living here is unity. Going forwards, we are planning a hair hills get-together, we are going to celebrate everything that is hair holds together. We've already been meeting at the, at the local church with the Romanian community where the police have been having meetings with them to describe and to explain to them what, what happens when children go into custody, what happens when adults go into custody. There's been another meeting, um, a really quite a big one, uh, bringing people together. Todd Hanula has run social enterprise Shine here for nearly 20 years. Despite the violence pushing Hair Hills into the spotlight, he doesn't want this area's reputation tarnished. I knew that it would blow over and it did and we were back to business as usual the next day. But of course people then start to have a, a fear, uh, is it a safe place to go? And you know, 99% of the time it is, uh, just like any place around Leeds. Um, so I think it's just, can we rebuild that reputation and move forward? As day-to-day -day life returns here, what remains is a community which says it's determined that one night of chaos won't define its future. Vicky Smith, ITV News, Hare Hills. Good to see that things are settling down there. Now, we've had an incredible response to last night's exclusive ITV-wide investigation into the state of special educational needs provision. Hundreds of you, I'm pleased to say, got in touch to share your thoughts. Yes, thank you for that. And here are a few. One mum emailed us to say her autistic son's been out of school for 14 months 
and that he hasn't received funding specifically for him for almost a year. She says we're fighting for him to get an education and it's falling on deaf ears. Meanwhile, Laura says she knows there's thousands of broken parents fighting this system, but we must fight on, she says. And Emma Louise says her autistic son's school deserves more credit. They spend so much time trying to make sure their kids are catered for. And if all schools did this, our world in general would be a much better place. Thanks as ever for your contribution. We always love to hear from you. Well, time now for some sport and we'll be heading over to Paris in a minute, but much closer to home, just up the road at Headingley. In fact, the Northern Superchargers have got their 100 campaign off to a losing start. In a double header, the women's team got proceedings underway against the Trent Rockets. After being set a target of 124, they were bowled out 21 runs short. And in the next few minutes, the men will hope to do much better in their match. The Leeds Rhinos claimed bragging rights in last night's West Yorkshire derby after thrashing the Huddersfield Giants 34-6. The Rhinos dominated the game and opened the scoring after just two minutes when Ash Handley went over to take him to third on this season's Super League try scoring table. Next, I wonder if you'll be tuning in to watch the opening ceremony of the Olympics in Paris tonight. It's certainly one way to experience the joyous occasion, isn't it, without leaving your home. But what about those Team GB fans who are going a step further and crossing the channel to see the world's biggest sporting competition? Our reporter Chris Conway is in the French capital and I spoke to him a little earlier and asked him whether the atmosphere was starting to build. Well, it's been grey and wet so far today, but it certainly hasn't dampened the excitement levels around these games in the run-up to the opening ceremony tonight. There's certainly an air of excitement when you walk around the French capital. Now, of course, it's been 100 years since Paris last hosted an Olympic Games, and the organisers say they want these ones to be unforgettable. It's one of the world's biggest sporting events in one of the world's greatest cities. It's the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris. Distance runner Max Bergen from Halifax has just recovered from injury, so isn't setting himself any targets. I mean, this will be my first Olympic Games, and uh, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd like to think I'll make a few more teams as well, but you never know, could, could well be my last. You've got to seize the, uh, the opportunity as it's presented to you, so I, I just want to make the most of, uh, of the experience. With 10,500 athletes competing in 329 events over the next two weeks, organisers say the Games will be protected by an unprecedented security operation. Those competing will be roared on by passionate crowds, with more than 15 million spectators expected in the French capital. Some have arrived already ahead of tonight's opening ceremony. To see Paris during Olympic Games, it's, for us, it's very uh, exciting yes. to, for, for us. The way they've done at the cities, uh, is they've put a lot of time and effort in, so it's uh, really impressive. You can get around easily and yeah, very easy on the transport, so it's great. We've been to the football yesterday. We, who did we see play? Spain versus Uzbekistan. The Jeux Olympic in here is very, very good. I'm from New York City, so I'm used to like big crowds and like you know big, big uh, buildings and everything, but it's totally different here. It's just amazing here. The beauty of Paris cannot be understated, and it's a beauty games organisers are keen to tap into, staging some of the Olympics' biggest events at some of the city's most famous landmarks. 25 venues in and around Paris are hosting events, including a purpose-built stadium at the Eiffel Tower, which is home to beach volleyball. Triathlon and cycling takes place at the Alexander III Bridge, while the Grand Palais welcomes martial arts and fencing. On the outskirts of the city, boxing and tennis takes place at Roland Garros. The Stade de France is the main stadium for athletics. The nearby aquatic centre will host swimming and diving. One athlete clambering back onto the diving board for Team GB is Tom Daly. In Paris, he'll become the first British diver to compete at a fifth Olympics. Despite being a Games veteran, he still hopes to make a splash by adding to his Olympic medal collection. I spend a lot more time on the physio bed. I find it a lot harder to get up in the morning without my body hurting. I think a lot of the older athletes will be able to feel me on that one. To have my family there, to be able to have my friends there, to be able to, for them to be able to see me compete is going to be, is going to be very special. Tonight, Tom, along with Rua Helen Glover, will have the honour of being flag bearers for Great Britain 
at the opening ceremony. What follows is 16 days of gruelling competition as each athlete vies for the ultimate prize, an Olympic gold medal. So, Chris, plenty of athletes hoping to bag medals during the Games. We've seen some of them on calendar earlier in the week. In terms of our region, who should we expect to see on the medal podium? Well, as you say, our part of the world has tasted success at these Games in the past. Now, among our medal contenders, Taekwondo star Bradley Sinden from Doncaster will hope to go one better than the silver medal he won three years ago in Tokyo. Harrogate diver Jack Law is aiming to add to the three medals he's won at the last two Olympics. And keep an eye on Sheffield sprinter Louis Hinchcliffe, who was recently crowned British 100-metre champion. Now, the opening ceremony gets underway here in the French capital tonight and for the first time in Olympic history it won't take place in a sporting stadium instead the athletes will board a flotilla of boats and they'll sail down the river Seine with thousands expected along the riverbanks in support Today, though, a major headache for the French authorities. A series of attacks on the high-speed rail network has left a lot of trains either cancelled or significantly delayed. Organisers hope the disruption doesn't spoil an Olympic Games expected to be full of sporting drama and medal success, and hopefully plenty of those for our part of the world. Well, enjoy that opening ceremony. Chris Conway in Paris, thank you. Now, the party's already started in Sheffield, where this year's Tramlines Festival has begun. Yeah, 40,000 music fans a day will head to Hillsborough Park over the weekend. And the good news is... Well, the good news is... It's not raining. <laughs> yes, last year coincided with the wettest July on record, you may remember. And the park was closed for repairs long after the music stopped. Well, Katie Oscroft is there for us now. There must be relief for all concerned. Oh, absolutely, Lara. What a difference a bit of blue sky makes, both behind the scenes and for the fans there watching Bombay Bicycle Club on the main stage right now. But about last year, that mud was fun for a while, but it caused some serious damage to this park. And organisers say they've been working really hard to make sure that doesn't happen this year. It was heartbreaking for us all as a team to see the park in that condition when we left. But what we committed to was putting it right, and we haven't stopped doing that. We've done a lot of work in the park. We've um, reinstated all the grass. We've done a lot of work on drainage around the park. We've worked really closely with the council and the parks team to make sure it's done right. Now, Katie, I know there are going to be a lot of big names performing on that stage over the next three days, but there's local talent too. Yes, Ian. Well, Paolo Natino is the one, uh, the big one, the building up to tonight. On Sunday, we've got Sheffield's own Human League. That's more my era. We've also got Dromfield's Bethany Grace. Uh, she won a competition. So after five years of coming here, looking up at the stage, she's performing on it. I made a video last year with my best friend saying how I'm going to manifest being on that stage. Grace, this time next year, I'll be on there. Have you always wanted to sing? Yeah, ever since I was little, I'd sing in like little talent contests and around my local area if they had like a little karaoke or open mic night thing. But at school, I did GCSE music, A level music, and music at university. All your friends and family here? Yes, they are. They're um, they'll be there watching. It's it's mental. And you've got your own little dressing room. I know. It's I know. It's really cute actually. I'm excited to use it in a bit. My name on it, Bethany Grace. Tramlines is the first proper festival that I'm doing, but hopefully next year or even towards the end of this year we can get some more projects going. It's going to be really fun. Oh, what a great story. Remember that name, Bethany Grace. You heard it here first. Now, Tramlines is on all weekend, 40,000 people a day. So if you're in the Hillsborough area of Sheffield, well, now you know where everyone's going. Oh, we do indeed, Katie. Thank you very much indeed. You go and enjoy the music. Go on, off you go. Get Burger as well. Oh, she's going to have a good night, isn't she? Well, from an up-and-coming star to one of the biggest stars on the planet, it's not every day that Hollywood royalty, no less, comes to town. But last night, Russell Crowe himself rolled into Leeds for a gig with his band Indoor Garden Party. Quite incredible, isn't it? The Oscar-winning actor who recently played Glastonbury chose the 400-capacity venue, the Brudenall Social Club, Partly due to a special link with his beloved Leeds United. But would our reporter Amelia Beckett be able to pin him down in the middle of his very busy schedule? 
It's a summer evening at the Brudenell Social Club. A car rolls in, but wait a second. Who's this? No, not Terry. His passenger. Yes, that's Russell Crowe, Hollywood superstar and Leeds United fan, driving past his fans ahead of his gig. So when he gets out, of course, I try my luck. How does it feel to be in Leeds? No response from me, but away. <laughs> Not to be defeated, it's time to seek out the VIPs who are about to get their chance to get a little closer than I did. First, we find Lynn from Retford. I'm Russell Crowe's biggest fan ever ever in the world. I've been, I've been in love with him for 24 years. But then we meet Maurizio, who's travelled a little further. So you've come all the way from Chile then? From Chile, yeah, yeah. Because I've been a, a Russell Crowe fan for 30 years and he's been uh, very important to me. Uh, when I came out of the closet, he was there because this is a movie where he plays a gay person. And then in comes Armandine and Mum Wendy, who's just hopped off the plane from Australia and has no idea who she's seeing. Mother dear? Yes, darling. We are here to see our distant relative. No way. <laughs> Don't say that. No, we're here no. to see <laughs> Russell Crowe. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh my God, that is a surprise. And finally, riding in on horseback, James and Jenny. He was an extra in the Gladiator. Really? Long time ago, yes. Yeah. We thought that was the closest we were going to get to Hollywood royalty, but then... Russell, can you spare a quick chat for yeah, ITV yeah, Yorkshire? Is that all right? Yeah. How does it feel to be in Leeds? It's great. Yeah. It's very really good. Yeah, we drove uh, drove through the night. Despite the interruptions. Early morning. Yeah. This is this is your second home, right? Do you mind? Can you get in there, close the door, don't talk to anybody or damage Show anybody. Showbiz. The musicians. <laughs> We're just over halfway through this tour. We've been playing in some incredible places, right? Piazza del Popolo in Ascoli Piccino, the Piazza del Campo in Siena for 12,000 people. And now the Brudenell Social Club. Brudenell Social Club in Leeds <laughs> for 400 standing. It's going to be just brilliant. Really looking forward to it. How special is it? I mean, it's such a small venue. Leeds United is your, is your team. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, we, we debated, you know, um, of various places we could play here, but we just like that intensity of a you know 400 people compared to the bigger stages and stuff that we've been doing. It's just going to be a great change up for us. I'm actually I've got uh, some fresh gear, <laughs> new away jerseys for all the band in it. And after all that, we got a little invite to the main show itself. Good evening, ladies. So, in the gladiator's own words, were they not entertained? It certainly seems they were. Amelia Beckett, ITV News, Leeds. Wow, what a night out in Leeds that was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who was going to come through the door next. I know, I remember watching the first Gladiator, what an amazing film. Second one comes out soon as well, 15th When's of that? November. 15th of yeah. November, right, well uh, we know, now we know, don't we? So uh, we do. what about the weather, should we find out what that's going to be like over the weekend? Here's Emma Jessen. Good visibility on the horizon. Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. Hello there, very good evening to you and a happy Friday evening to you. It looks like summer has got its hat on for us once we get past some showers tomorrow. A good slice of fine, dry, warm, sunny weather from Sunday onwards and it'll last more than one day. I know sunshine isn't for everyone, but I'm sure that will be welcome news to quite a few people. Not so great in Paris at the moment, rather damp, I'm afraid. That's the forecast, not the mood. They've got the weather that the UK had yesterday, but after that it looks like getting really hot, very hot, warm and dry, maybe too hot for some of the athletes and as well. Back to our part of the world then. We see this, this system moving through tomorrow with some showers on it, but then a great big sprawling high digs in, and so things really drying up from Sunday onwards. And that high stays across the UK right the way through the first part of next week at least. Rewinding though to the next few hours for us, any earlier showers are going to be dying away. Skies clear overnight. It's going to be quite a calm night. We lose the humidity as well, and so actually it's going to be a bit more comfortable for sleeping tonight with temperatures in the low double 
figures. Into tomorrow then, and the sun's up about quarter past five in the morning, sets about ten past nine in the evening, and it's a fine, bright, sunny start to the day. You can see we've got a clump of showers, though, to the west of the Pennines, and they do start to spill across later on. Could be a bit heavy in places, but they'll move through fairly fleetingly. At lower levels, where we are walking around, it's going to be fairly light in terms of winds, and so that'll offset the cloud and the showers a little bit, so maybe not feeling too bad at 20 to 22 Celsius. But look at it after that. You can see everything really settles down, getting very hot, especially as we head towards Tuesday. So, of course, pollen levels will be rising and we're expecting high UV. So take care. That's it. Bye-bye. TUI sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. Well, Lovely. Emma's certainly cheering on Team GB, isn't she, in that dress? I know, follow that. Can't really. <laughs> Just red isn't enough, is it? <laughs> Amazing. Well, uh, enjoy the Olympics if you're watching it, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.